And then hopefully it's actually recording my voice. I'm not sure if it is or not. So hopefully it will be. And I'm going to share screen. I guess we'll just share the screen, even though it seems and the sound. So let's see if this works. Oh, look, look we got one. We got one. We got a live one. Okay. <laughs> Shh, don't scare him. <laughs> I'm hunting us. Ryan, can you hear me? Yeah, Dr. S. Hi. I probably cannot hear you. I just realized I don't have speakers. So if you just don't mind chatting. Oh, I see it. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. So it looks like I'm going to be able to, you'll be able to hear me and we are recording, but I might likely not be able to hear you. So one thing I think we're going to do is, um, Ryan, if you have questions, um, if I don't see your chat, um, you're going to need to use your uh, buddies in the classroom and ping one of them if you guys have, can somebody, uh, do you guys have a way to talk to each other? Is that okay? We do a little teamwork, um, but I'll try to keep my eye on the chat or just tell them, you know, look at the chat. Um, why do I have two chat windows? Oh, there we go. I'll text. Well, there you go. You're on notice, Tiff. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> you're the one. Uh, and then somebody let Rosie know. Okay, so let's get this going. Okay, so just to review, so we're gonna have like a little bit of a busy screen, but that's okay. So we're gonna make it work. Um, so welcome back everybody, good to see you all. And so just to do a couple of housekeeping things as we begin to adjust this new kind of hybrid norm, um, I wanna review a few things so that we have it very clear and then answer any questions that you have as you reviewed the first real module of a normal standard week. So the face page should look really familiar. And I tried to do that for both of my classes. I tried not to change anything so that it looks very familiar to you. Um, and actually, why don't we jump to the canvas so I can walk you through there. Um, so go back. So of course you have the overview. And then I added one more reading. I do recognize that chapter one is a little bit longer, uh, but it is, you'll, I'll give you basically two full chapters for the whole semester, and then we're gonna have peripheral reading. But those are the two chapters that I'm gonna give you one more next week, or for this week, so I'll give it to you tomorrow, or Thursday. Uh, those are the two longest chapters. They're reference chapters for you. You're gonna go back to them often to remember things. So. Uh, but they are important because they're going to lay some important groundwork for you. So please do read them. And then I did add one more paper, which you definitely needed, um, which is the framework, which is what we talked about in the lecture. And we're going to talk a little bit more about today. Um, but as you can see, everything looks very similar. The only thing that we don't have anymore is that discussion piece, um, which I am putting as a task. I don't know if I still love the task format. It's kind of new for me. I kind of liked having all your stuff together where you guys could all see it. So um, maybe in next week or the week after, I'll take a little poll and have everybody think. You know, do you remember what I'm talking about the discussions yeah. at the end? Okay. Now, keep in mind, I'll repeat this. So the task is like that discussion that used to be due the Sunday before class when we had Monday. Um, some of you that weren't here before, don't worry about that part. Basically, it was just to prepare you for the incoming class, right? So the next class. Um, you'll notice that the task for this week is due on the third. I just gave you a little extra time because we're still practicing. But remember that I said last week, well, I know I said a lot last week, but uh, the task is what we'll be doing in class today. So we'll apply that in class today, but I'm, I'm making it technically due the day after class. So typically it'll be due on Wednesdays, end of the day on Wednesdays, like 11, 15, 9 p.m because I don't want it to be the reason you don't come to class. Does that make sense? However, I do want you to at least, you know, look over the questions, know that you looked over some of the material so that you come in and you're not leaving your buddies hanging, right? So you have some familiarity. Does that make sense? Okay. So, oh, whoops, let me make this big. Okay. Right over there. Right. There. 
Sorry, Ryan. Still my favorite. Okay. Um, are you guys okay seeing this? Is it okay for you? Okay. Okay. So you'll see the slides. You have the readings. You have the slides. I did PowerPoints and it's still doing this weird thing. I don't know what else to do. So, but you should be able to download them. Okay. Okay. Because I don't know what's happening. So I gave you the check in with the task. So everybody was able to at least look at it or at least open it. And so you guys understand what to do. In an ideal world, you read, look at slides, and then you do the test. There's, you can submit it as many times as you want, you review, whatever you want, okay? And again, you have until Friday, so there's no penalty. And then, oh, we're not there yet. Um, this is what we're going to cover today. So we'll get there, but I don't want to go there yet. So, yes? Yes. I wanted to give you guys a lot of time. Um, and I may have messed, messed up the date too. So, you know, first, third, but. Um, but actually, I'm kind of glad because I do want you guys to have plenty of time. I really want you to read that first chapter. Mm -hmm. And I know it's long. So, take your time. Um, because we're laying some key groundwork. And that actually does go into um, if you remember the slides from last week, it's that inductive deductive reasoning that we talked about. Because our primary goal, and this is our reading from last week, is to get to that continuum. Does anybody remember that continuum that I triumphantly wrote on the board? I just lost my marker. Oh. Starts with a D. Data, information, knowledge. There you go. Okay. That's a long word. Men. Decision, we call it whatever you want. Decision. Another one. Action. You'll see a lot of these. Depends on the field. Wisdom is another one they like to use. I don't care what you call it. I just want you to know. Okay. Our goal here is to get to here. This is the goal. And does this sound familiar to anybody in management? Yeah. What is this? Oh, here. This might help. What is that? Okay, guys, clear the cobwebs. Come on, just think back to 644A. Anybody? Is it like a key function of something? Of like maybe management? So look, they align. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but this is your goal, right? Remember I told you that as leaders and managers, you have to make a lot of decisions, sometimes with very little information, sometimes with plenty of time and lots of information that never happens. But ideally, you want to try to make the best decisions you can with the best information that you have at the time. And so what we've been doing is we've been trying to say, how can we do this? How can we set ourselves up for the most success? Um, so, I mean, again, this is fine too. Please don't think these are. It's just that this aligns with the terms that we're, we're already familiar with. Call it whatever, call it ham sandwich. I don't care. Just remember. Okay. So if our goal is uh, data, information, knowledge, decision making, as I've written on the board, um, <laughs> this is so weird. Okay. Um, then we need to think about um, what data and what info and what knowledge and all that. Okay, so that's where we have to conceptual. That's the whole construct of getting always to decision making because everything that we're doing in this class, even the weird stuff that more theory that Shafino's putting up again is about getting us to that point. Um, and one of the really key components of making decisions is we have to think about the decisions, which we often have very little time to think. So usually when you make a decision, you're usually in a rush. You usually don't have as much information as you want. Or sometimes you have the privilege or the luxury of a lot of information. Maybe too much information and makes decision making difficult. Has anybody ever been in that situation? Or too much time to make a decision. It's rare, enjoy. <laughs> all right, so before we continue, what I would like for you all to do is um, with a buddy, just don't, don't get too close. 
I want you to complete the tasks for the next 10 minutes that you were uh, tasked with. So review what you had. If you haven't finished them, I know very few of you have completed them because they're not due Friday. That's totally fine. Think of this as your first draft of your text. So reference the reading, reference the slides, because you'll need them. And do your best to complete the tasks for task two. So online folks, you guys can get together. We can't hear you, so you can unmute and talk to each other, I think. And if you can't, I can push you into a room. Just let me know on the chat, and if it's better if I push you into a room, and then I'll pull you back. Does that make sense? Sounds good. So, but you, you have to get with a buddy, unless you really don't want to get near anyone, and then you can work alone. Um, I can't tell your reactions, because I can't see your face, and you're behind computers. So I'm going to need some verbal feedback. Or a thumb. Okay, so at least groups of two, uh, and uh, and I'll give you guys. It's, I'll give you until one twenty, one twenty-five. Okay. Do you understand? Rosie, have you have you done the reading? Uh, I've done the task as well. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm just like. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at it right now. I don't know if I can see it once I've answered it, though. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Take a survey. Pass two? Yes. Oh, it's set up as a survey. So that does a great just quit. Yes. Just want to as many times as you want. It's unlimited. You don't even have to submit it on there. You can just do notes because we're going to discuss it class. So, yeah. And if you guys don't want to, oh, I don't want to show you that. Okay. Yeah, we can talk to each other. But I already did this survey. <laughs> I can't see my answers. <laughs> I don't know if she can hear me. I don't think she can hear you, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but it yeah, I, I think it's okay. I'm gonna do task two right now and I'll I'll let you know. I don't know. I can screenshot her or something. Uh she shared it, so I mean we can go through it together. Cool. Okay, that should be <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. Right. If you want to go through as you do stuff, we can do that too. Or I can wait until you're done. Okay. Okay. Either way, I'll I'll probably I'll just go through everything and then I'll let you know when I'm done. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna grab myself something. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Right now, 
just make sure you're going to kind of discuss the question. <laughs> And don't worry about number four yet, because I feel like we might we might need more time. So okay. don't worry about number four. Oh, you're not you're not you're gonna do it. You're just for our discussion. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, you're not exempt. You're not free of it. All right. How many are done with one three three Okay. You got one three three. For the most part, one three three. Sorry, I was looking at that. trouble finding them where they were on the page or the module. I was just thrown off that was meant as a survey. So I wasn't really sure. I expected to like download something and like write it out in person. Oh no. Um well that's weird. Was it a, where did it say survey at the top or something? No when you click it says take the survey. Yeah. So 
when you click and this comes up, which doesn't it's really weird. matter. It's irrelevant. I mean, as long as it allows us to rise now that we know it's survey, I think people yeah. I, I think I, I click survey instead of quit so that it doesn't go on like the main migrating thing. Mm -hmm. Um hmm. <laughs> well, I, I'll try to play around with it, but I don't want it to mess you guys up. But um, but I do want you to be looking for this, okay? So I'll call it a task survey or something. I can change the terminology to keep that up. Um, but I made it gigantic because I don't want to, I, I, I put in the comments where the answers are located. Um, but, um, but yeah, so essentially this is just an opportunity for you guys to understand what's important, what I want you guys to review and just hit some of the key points. Um, and so number one is, it, it's pretty simple and there's literally a line that's like word for word what that describes this. Um, so it can be as simple as that or in your own words. Um, but I want you to have the understanding of what health services research is and why it's so applicable in your day-to-day -day life in the field, regardless of whatever field you go into, non-research ones. And that was really the goal for that. So um, who wants to tell me what they put for what HSR is versus basic science? First of all, who knows, who can tell me what basic science is? Does anybody want to? Go ahead. Okay. That's actually a really good description. Um, it's very, very fine scale, right? So it take, imagine it to be very, very, the very basic elements of anything that we look at, right? Okay, that's very good. And it's something, it's something also you may have heard is wet lab research. Have you heard of wet lab research? Okay, so HSR would be dry lab research. So you guys are at a dry lab right now, right? Because there's no chemicals, there's no uh, reagents, there's no assays, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, anybody else? Who wants to take a step at what is HSR? It's okay. I say in my HSR is an applied science because basic science is only one instrument in HSR. HSR is an applied science because it only includes the process of the specific and natural science and has more than just the hypothesis. You went to the natural and then applied science is more of a behavioral kind of way in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like that. I don't know if I, I think, I think um, any microbiologists or toxicologists would disagree with the tools uh, because they have all kinds of crazy toys, but, but I see where you're going with that in terms of very fine scale production, right? Um, and that is true. So the idea is a very fine scale answer, very, very specific to, uh, to whatever the, the, they're studying. Whereas, um, Applied science is not only direct to the person that's going to be um, impacted, right? So applied to the patient, applied to the field. Whereas basic science is building knowledge. It's um, and HSR can also build knowledge. We don't think it cannot, but most basic science tends to be um, really at a construct that's such a fine scale that it's really building multiple elements. Go ahead. So could you kind of say that HSR findings are more like generalized and could be applied in more areas with like basic science research, like findings are usually like a very like kind of unique situation that's like not always super applicable. More well, it depends because when I tell you about implementation science, you know, we really think about tailoring to the population or tailoring to the it's really more about the the um, translation. Right, so the translation of health services research is is more uh, is focused on making sure that it gets to the bedside, really. So the bench to bedside element, right? When you think about translation, um, there's still many more steps. So there could be a mechanism that can be understood about a specific um, uh, element, like a cell structure or protein but there's still a lot more work that needs to be done before a human being can benefit from it. Whereas in health services research, we're looking at multiple elements at once, so a complex interaction um, that can actually benefit uh, somebody more directly. Now, 
the impact of basic science is significant, right? So the impact can be, um, you know, uh, addressing spinal cord injuries. So it can be regenerating new cells to, to regrow whatever. Um, so it's very different. The impacts are very different. The stages are longer, et cetera, et cetera. So both are very important, very necessary, but the trajectories are different. The focus is different. The designs are different. We can say that, you know, HSR is more uh, for population versus individuals. Like it will help more, um, especially um, geared towards healthcare, uh, service, uh, healthcare systems for populations versus that individuals, like you're saying. Yeah, you could say that actually, like a systems level. So it's more thinking about the, the approach in general, um, which I guess I kind of see what you're saying now, Gabby. Um, so yeah, it could be, you could consider it that way, whereas the, as a basic science, it's very specific to whatever the, the target pack that you're looking at. So yeah. target cell or uh, target uh, protein or genetic biomarker. Um, you, you can tell I'm not a basic scientist. I'm like, oh, don't worry. <laughs> you mentioned um, the different trajectories. Could you also, I mean, you said knowledge earlier. I was kind of thinking about um, would um, basic science ultimately result in um, like finer medical science knowledge, whereas alternative research really helps provide um, knowledge to form decision making at you know, yes, a absolutely level. Like, absolutely. Um, um, uh, basic science might like, result in um, new practices or procedures or you know things like that that um, would be uh, like medical procedures. That's what I'm thinking of, uh, like your um, spinal cord. You're thinking more therapies, right? Mm -hmm. Not how the therapy is delivered. Right. Because the key distinction is so basic science and clinical, clinical medicine is what, because clinical medicine is also developing new drugs, right? So, drug development, pharmaceutical research um, is considered technically a basic science, but they've kind of gotten their own niche and so they're, you know, they're doing a lot of. Um, compared to effectiveness studies that are very health services research related, but they're more medical and clinical studies. So they don't even fall into the applied realm that we are looking at. Um, but yes, so think of it in terms of, does this medicine work versus this medicine? Whereas we care about, does this medicine, which works, does it work better when we apply it this way versus this way? Does that make sense? So it's more of an application. Correct, hence applied. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But that's exactly why it's applied. Because we always think about applied, like what is that? Applied is used often, but we never really conceptualize why do you call things applied? So that's why I really cared about you making that distinction. Because you can do comparative effective studies, but those are more uh, clinical RCT type studies. But I want you thinking about, but how, how, how are we delivering it better? So we have guidelines important care, but if guidelines important care isn't working for subpopulations that, that um, are, low income that don't speak English, then how do we make it better so that they too can benefit from that great guideline important care that we know works great, right? Because we know that the treatment works and that's where you have to know it's an evidence-based treatment, but you know that it works too. Obviously you need to know that. Well, how do we know that? We'll get there. Okay, so we understand then the applied process. Okay. There won't be a quiz. This is just really important for you to know as good managers. Okay. At what point in the HSR process do we need to review the literature? I need everybody, most everybody, to go back and change their answer that has answered. Um, anybody want to know what the answer is? Raise your hand if you think it's A. Raise your hand. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have said what I said before. I apologize. <laughs> Raise your hand if you think it's B. Raise your hand if you think it's C. Raise your hand if you think it's D. Nobody better put their hands up. That's not even <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so the answer is C. Um, and that is also in the chapter. But uh, so as we look through the process of HSR, we know that this is important. By the way, this can also be used in basic science. I forgot to make that. But this is any information, really. But anyway, we know that this is important, right? We know that this is our goal. 
But to get here, remember I didn't, I said this was not exactly perfectly linear. We need to think, right? Because it's not like data just falls from the sky. And it's not like we know what data is coming or what to do with it. We don't just magically turn it into info, right? So there's a lot of little like post-it notes around here, a lot of context, right? And that's what we consider conceptualization and the groundwork. So when you look at the chapter, you'll see there's, there's a lot of uh, back end or front end work that must be done. I call it thinking. Uh, in, in the slides and in, in research, we call it inductive reasoning, but it's, it's thinking about your, your approach, thinking about your thoughts. Uh, we don't often have time to do this, which is usually why we screw this up. So this is the deductive part, right? This is the easy part because we have the data and then we just start doing things. But if we do things without a blueprint, a structure, then we're just kind of doing things. And this happens a lot. You may have heard of it as misinformation. Because you hear people looking at data and pretty much all data can be anything we want it to be. Um, I don't know if you've heard the term is like all models are wrong, but some are useful. As professionals, you want your models, your data, your information to be useful. Knowledge, filled with knowledge. You don't want it just to be a model for modeling sake. Output for output sake. Because that's when many conclusions are jumped to. There's no context. It's just a bunch of info and people can do whatever they want. And that's what happens, right? And that can be very dangerous as we're seeing in the media and in the news. So it's really important that we take the time to conceptualize, we take that time to think. Okay, so we'll talk about conceptualization today actually. And then the last thing I wanna cover, and this is a review for me to see what you remember from Epi. Um, and that's also part of the review that I gave you in the prior knowledge quiz which we'll review when you all finish it. Cause that's due um, today. Huh. I've already started reviewing it. So I know we're gonna cover a few things. We'll cover a few things next week. But, so basically I gave you the key keywords here, independent and dependent variables, right? So do we remember the kind of the, the letters that are associated with dependent and independent variables? Yeah, X and Y, correct. Okay, so was this, uh, I feel like this might have been written badly, like I might have written it badly, but um, the equation is what? F of X equals Y. Mm -hmm. And usually we write it Y equals F of X, which is kind of annoying because it's backwards, right? It seems backwards, but that's just, I don't know why, this is how we write it. Right? So, why is what? Okay, so that's our, which is also known as our outcome. I heard outcome somewhere. Okay, I was like, I swear I heard it. Okay, that's right. So, and then what's X? Vitamin D. Okay, so does this make sense? And I know it looks backwards because I want you to think, I don't want you to get used to one direction or another direction. I want you to think, I want you to get used to thinking and seeing and putting it together so that whenever things are thrown at you out of order, it doesn't matter. You're like, I don't care. I know what to look for. Put it in any order you want. I got this. Does that make sense? So I want you to be able to understand what your um, research question statement is. Because when you start making your own research questions, I want you to be thinking about what am I looking at? What's the outcome I want? And what am I looking that's gonna impact? And then, we'll, and then we'll get to know about PICO, which I'll be next week too. But you'll start building on this. But for now, just think about outcome, okay? And this is your, your comparator, if you will, independent variables. 
So the independent effect of vitamin D on COVID-19, right? How does vitamin D use impact COVID-19? I didn't give you a population, right? That's okay. We're not there yet. I just gave you these two things. That's all we want. Any questions on these three questions? Questions, comments, thoughts? Okay. So, how are we doing on time? We're good. We started at one, so we're still good, right? Everybody's still good? Okay. Um, all right. So, to piggyback off of that, I don't have a whole lot here. Are there any questions on the slides that stood out for you guys? Um, I'm only going to jump to what I think is really important, and then I'm going to give you guys um, the reasoning. Okay. So I, I talk a little bit about um, theory. And the only reason that I mentioned theory is not, oh, hold it. Why, why isn't this doing what I wanted to? Present. Oh, oh. Whew, that was close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That scared me a little. <laughs> so we talked a little bit about theory and we did quite a bit of theory last semester. Um, and the one thing I want you to remember about theory is that it's a lens. It doesn't have the structure to necessarily get us specifically to this deductive reasoning, right? But it does help us to think. So what we look for is theory as a lens. A lens that helps us think. Do you have a question or are you just stretching? Okay, <laughs> no worries. No, you're good, you're good. Um, and I, gave, I shared this with you guys too. Oops. Hold on. I shared this with you guys to get you. Um, okay, so that you guys can understand the three ways in general that theories are looked at in general. So theory as a paradigm is to demonstrate a shift in thinking in general, right? So when we went from uh, germ theory to the medical model to uh, now the social justice model, those are paradigm shifts. Uh, theory as a lens are any of the wonderful theories that we covered last semester. And then theory as new knowledge are really kind of a lot of the frameworks that we're about to talk about. And now that's where you start to see that kind of intersection of theory and frameworks because we operationalize those for health services research because we're applied. So that's where we've taken theory and we've applied it. So that's how we're using theory as knowledge. Whereas you have philosophy and you have sociology that are generating new theories. Does that make sense? Okay. In um, sociology, for example, uh, theory as new knowledge would be um, 1974's social determinants. We apply it to our frameworks, right? So we take that into account. Um, so that's one that we can think about. But that still doesn't get us here, right? That's not exactly what, that's not data. Theory is not data and neither are frameworks for that matter. But frameworks get us there, okay? Let me see if there's anything I'll miss here. Uh, okay. And the reason that I want you to think about theory and I want you to think about uh, frameworks is that we're thinking about uh, how do we improve on what we already know? How do we improve on the things that we're already doing, okay? So um, it's very easy to take any data and keep doing what we always do it and keep applying the same knowledge that we always do. So for example, Healthcare used to be delivered at home. And it was delivered at home, it was delivered at home, it was delivered at home. And it wasn't until people realized that, oh, well, actually, um, only poor people went to the hospital many years ago that they started really, well, actually, we can improve care spread to more people if we just improve the quality. Or, for example, that um, I didn't do my history lecture with you guys today. Um, I'm trying to remember the guy that invented in mystery. Uh, you know, he talked about hygiene and surgery. And it wasn't until he realized, oh, you know what? This is the new knowledge that we're gaining from 
applying the same information, same processes, but you begin to notice, you know what? I realize that if I wash my hands when I deliver this baby, it's less likely to die versus if I don't wash my hands. And again, that is the generation of your knowledge. You have the data, but you have to think about it, okay? So that's how we work in health services research. Um, and we use both. We use both theory as a way to think, as a lens to generate new knowledge as well, but then we also apply it. And that's the beauty and challenge of health services research. And you'll hear that a lot more in implementation science as well. Are you guys kind of following me? Yes, no, kind of? Okay, it's okay. Because this is, this is where it gets challenging. But that's why you really rely on your frameworks to operationalize any of your thinking, because you're not being required right now at this stage to generate new knowledge. You're practicing. So don't feel like you have to generate new knowledge out of the gate. Uh, that's very stressful. So, knowledge is the framework. From information, uh, we convert information into this framework of new knowledge? Ah, yes. Well, um, this knowledge is a little different. Okay, I'm, gonna... I'm sorry. Yes, this is knowledge related specifically to this information. But yes, it is new knowledge. It is new knowledge. The idea is that it's either knowledge that um, adds to the existing framework and, and theoretical lenses that we know, or it um, conflicts with them and makes us think of new exploration. So yes, yes. Yeah, because I thought we were doing the process of HSR, but that's the process. No, this is not the process of HSR. This is the process of making good decisions using data. This is part of the process of HSR. Wow. But we're, that's where we that's why we're talking about inductive and deductive. That's a great point though, because I did I just realized I'm using knowledge here as well. Do you guys understand the question she asked? That's a great point. So when I talk about generating new knowledge. We can generate knowledge from data, but if it doesn't have a lens, if it doesn't have a framework, does this knowledge, is it applicable? Is it contextual? We don't know. We don't, it doesn't have a home. It doesn't have, it doesn't have a context to land it, right? So does that kind of make sense? That's perfect. I planted her here. She, she nailed it. Um, I, and it's, see, it's so important to think about the terms that we use because I was just, I just realized that I'm using knowledge twice. So essentially the way it works is that in health services research and in general, we use um, two kinds of reasons to make these choices and decisions. We use inductive and deductive reasons. And I don't want to confuse you. I, it, and it's, I find this fascinating, this abstract thinking, but it's important because often we jump directly to deductive reasoning, right? So it's very easy. Because in data, we're only allowed to identify the information that is measurable. We can't measure Betsy's discipline. We can only measure the fact of what we observe, right? Whereas inductive reasoning is where we generate new theories or hypotheses, we guess. We're like, eh, eh, I'm gonna land here. And then I can, I can decide, but it requires further testing, right? Whereas here, I can test it by collecting the data. Does that make sense? You're not just, just stay with me. Okay, don't worry about that. We don't care, we don't care, we don't care, we don't care. Okay. I'll go back to that, don't worry. Well, that's the process of HSR. So the blue is inductive, where we think Betsy's likely, is it Betty or Betsy, is likely to regain the weight. It's because we're observing something, right? And what stood out for us is that she's been disciplined. We want to see what's been done before. Well, she has no discipline. So we assume she's just not going to do this, even though there's other contextual information, but we're not testing it. Maybe we didn't look at a framework. Maybe we didn't do whatever we needed to do. This is the inductive part. This is where you all find a topic you like, you find something that interests you. You look at something, you're like, what the heck? That's how they started seeing the cases in, for example, in the ICU. They noticed that the people that were more likely to be hospitalized were not vaccinated because they started to notice a pattern. 
you'll notice this as managers. How many of you can tell me something in your work that is messed up? Anybody? Anybody think their work is perfect right now? Their job, everything's great? Perfect? <laughs> That's a problem. Why is that a problem? How do you know that? I'm sorry? How do you know that? How do you know that? Okay. I don't really care how you know that, but my point is <laughs> this isn't a quiz. <laughs> Lit review. See where I'm trying to get at? You're, it, you're doing inductive reasoning. What do I know? Why do I know that? How do I know that? Why is this bad? How do you know that no, no time off is a bad thing? How are you not saying, why is that even popping up for you, right? Why is that a phenomenon to you, right? That's, that is HSR. That's inductive. Deductive is I'm going to find data on a survey done on burnout in healthcare workers. And I'm going to analyze my data and draw a conclusion. Oh, look. And then based on prior knowledge and my new knowledge, here's a decision. We need time off. See how that works? But it's not just your knowledge. You have the whole weight of the evidence from your inductive reasoning. Does that make sense? So that's why you said that's a part of the process. This is the whole process. So the first part. Is that conceptualizing? Yes, and groundbreak. Thank you. Not ground. Oh my gosh, I'm just teaching you the wrong concept. Groundwork. No, I don't even think it's. I just I forgot the word. It's in the it's in the campus. Starts with ground. Oh, I'm so sorry. Legwork. I don't know. But yes, it's the a priori work that is seems soft. You're you, most of you are usually like. Ugh. Or your PI will tell you, oh, this is what matters, and this matters, and this matters. But really, it's about you also wanting to do. And remember, when we talked about decision making and management, we talked about word of mouth. We talked about sources of evidence. That's how we find information. So maybe somebody told you something, and you're like, gosh, I gotta check that out. And then I sometimes will look at the literature, depending on what the question is, or something that piques my interest. So does that make sense? So this is inductive for you, this is deductive. And that's why, but we need to do the inductive work before we can really do a good job here. And then you just keep circling because that new knowledge and decisions will get new questions, generate new thoughts, new observation, and you go again. And that's just how we build the body of evidence over time. And then you spend like 30 years of your life researching things and that's academia <laughs> or quality. <laughs> uh, but yeah, any questions about that? All right, good talk. And that's it on that one. So um, let's take a little break and then we'll repeat, um, we'll review a little bit and then we'll play with the mesh terms. And I'll introduce you to, to um, uh, We'll start introducing the lit review and research questions, and we'll sass. We'll sass it out. I know you all are going to do after the break. That's what we're going to do frameworks. Yeah, we're going to cover the frameworks. So you guys can start seeing what's your favorite framework, because I have one. Anybody know what my favorite framework is? Really? You don't know what my favorite framework is? That one, <laughs> that one over there. Uh oh. You can guess that I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> yes, I'm not above bribery. All right, I'm going to pause for uh, 10 minutes. Take a step, stretch your legs. You good? Okay. Yay! I'm so glad Ryan's here. And Rosie, where'd Rosie go? I don't see her. Just disappeared. Oh, there she is. Okay. All right, so take a 10 and um, you guys, you do your thing. I don't know what y'all do, but I'll see you guys in 10. I'm going to pause the recording. We're Zoom recording and let me know that you can see. Can you see me now? And by me, I mean the screen. I can't see you. Hold on. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, thumbs up. I got it. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're back in place. Thank you so much. I love this. It's a team effort, guys. We can do this. We can do this. Okay. Okay. So live name prepares stats to say, okay, we're going to do this. Okay. So then, um, then I give my, my library oh. nickname. I'm doing Taco Tuesday because I was talking about food and I'm home. But you do whatever you want. Okay. So name it whatever you want. You name it your name. Like I said, don't make it too long because you're going to have to retype it every single time you do anything. So don't make it crazy. Don't let it start with a number and no characters. Just letters. And it's not case sensitive. That doesn't care. The reason that we do SAS, and this is a this is just from SAS Inc. Uh, Software-based commands are uppercase, uh, unique terms, like stuff I make up, lowercase. Just helps you remember. But not obligatory. You do whatever you want. So now I nicknamed my folder. Now what would probably be the next step? Tell it where my folder is, right? So what you do is you just put your folder address. So what do I do? I go to my OneDrive. And I'm going, to I'm going to put it here in page 646. So I'm going to right click and click on properties. And I'm going to click, oh, this is going to be super long, Jesus. Oh, San Diego State, you're super long, stinking folder names. Well, let's see if it takes it because it has a stinking. Actually, you can open it too. Right click. It's even easier to copy address. And then I just put it in here in double quotes. I don't know if it's gonna get, and look, it's just a folder. It is not, oh, whoops, hang on, let me put that. You don't have to. Just put it directly in the window. You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. If you want to create a folder, you can, right? Of course, uh, which part? Um, just like, because like, I think I got lost when how you got into like the folder. Oh, yes, of course. So for those of you that didn't know, uh, that didn't watch me get into the folders, um, all I did is I clicked on the waffle oh. and then you go to OneDrive, but you can go down here. OneDrive. Yeah. And it takes you to your OneDrive. It might make you log in, log in with your SDSU, and then you would log out when you log out of the computer and it logs you out. When you log in back home, it'll be there. So and you just go to property. Um, actually, oh, let me show you a little trick. So, like I said, I made a folder called PH 646 and then I right click and I copy the address, and that's it. Uh, oh, in the SAS code, I did add that last backslash because I always, um, because I want it in that folder. Actually, I wonder if that's an error. Let me run it real quick to make sure. I always, I always mess that part up because I always forget. I haven't coded in so long that I always forget that. But I think it's, because it's in that folder that I want stuff. But I don't think SAS cares about that first slash, that last slash, but it does care about the quotes. Do you see how it's purple? Yeah. That's what matters. Because look, here's what happens if it's not. Um, Oh, see, it's allowing so many more errors now that it's not doing it. Usually it won't be purple. And that's bad. Okay. The other thing that's important is you do the semicolon. And then the important command in SAS is run. Okay. So you do run and then semicolon. Okay. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Where? Semicolon. They're all semicolon. Yeah. Oh. 
Okay, so when you feel ready, do you see the little running man right here? Light him up and just see what happens. Okay. So how many of you had nothing happen? Nothing happened, anybody else nothing? Are you sure? Are you sure? What did I say about your other window? What did I say? You have to check on the other windows. What other windows? Uh, no? no. Log. Look in your logs. Did somebody copy my live name? Okay. I'm just kidding. How's your log? What's your log say? All right. Got it. That's because you're missing. 
want this live name. Okay. I highlight and run. Now I have a new one. Another thing I can do is, you know what? I really want, I want to draw from this folder, but guess what? I also really want to draw from, from this folder. Um, I don't know what this folder is. I'm just pretending. So I'm going to do these two. Okay. So guess what? Now I have two live names. And I want them both to work. So now what I've done is I have activated two folders. So SAS in this editor window knows that I'm going to be pulling from two folders. You'll do this if I have to give you something and you got to pull it from a folder and put it into another folder. So let's say you have one folder that's on your desktop, but you have another, like your downloads folder, and then you have your OneDrive folder. So let's say I give you data and you have to download it. And you can just pull it from the downloads folder into your window folder and save it to that. Make sense? 
So you can pull multiple live names, but you have to reference it. You have to call it is what we say in SAS. Everybody with me? Okay, so now I have these two beautiful live names and I don't wanna lose this file. But I know once I close it, I need to do something, I need to save it, right? So like I said, I would recommend that you make a folder in your uh, 646, I'm sorry, in your OneDrive. I think that might not be a bad idea, but basically you wanna save this like this. You can either save as, and interestingly, and I have no idea how Taylor did this. This is why I learned something from you guys. She actually did that using her live name statement, but by doing so, she blocked herself from using it for anything else. So she somehow managed to say, make a SAS file exactly this, and make her um, her statement in her live name statement. So that's why I said you're already a step ahead of us. So I'm gonna save mine, not here. I wanna save mine in my, where's my OneDrive? Right there. Where are you OneDrive? There it is. So I'm gonna save it here. And I'm gonna call it, you call it whatever you want. Ham sandwiches, whatever. I'm calling it pastry six, week two. Now I can close all this and I'm done. Okay, goodbye, I went to sleep. Okay, oh wait, I come back. Oh wait, I, I wanted to look at something. Let me open up SAS. Oh, editor window, I don't have anything. Wait a second. Open program, there it is, 646. In my OneDrive, there's my file. See that? Everybody with me? Now do that, save it, close everything, and open it back up. And open up your SAS file. Because you're going to do one more task, and then we're going to go. And we'll be done. So close it all down. Online folks, don't hesitate to ask questions if you have any. OK. Well, you said what you want because it doesn't matter. As long as because inside here you're referencing that folder, but you just need to get to that that little editor. Your um, I see a hand up over here. I'm kind of okay. Everybody got it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Close it out. Open it back up. Yeah. Because you need it open. We're gonna do one more task in the window. With the folder or the file? The file. Yeah, go ahead and open it. Yeah, just go for it. You have it. You can't break it. Just don't <laughs> have it. Challenge accepted. <laughs> okay, now that's why I never give you my original time, like the original data. Okay. So everybody has their window open? The last thing I'll teach you, and then we're done, is it's called annotation. So annotation is how you take notes in the code. And we do this to remind ourselves what things are, how to use them, um, and it's green. So green is annotation. It's also how we um, silent code. So if we don't want to run something, let's say, but we want to keep it. And we could just do this. And it makes it green. Make sense? Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are stars. Those are, oh, that is so little. Yeah. Dang. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I can't make a phone bigger than that. That's the one thing. That's an asterisk. Yeah. Not a thingy. Not a thingy. <laughs> 